Hello there. Let's talk about the trabecular pattern of bone and how it looks in different osseous problems that affect the way the trabecular looks in radiological studies. Trabecula are delicate, interconnected, lattice-like structures that make up the cancellous bone. The trabecula provides structural support to bones while also playing a role in bone marrow storage and the transmission of forces throughout the skeleton. We have bone trabecula everywhere, but let's use the proximal femur as an example as it's been studied plenty. Here we have several trabecular patterns, with the primary tensile trabecula and the primary compressive trabecula being the most important. As the name implies, they provide support to tensile and compressive stress applied to the proximal femur. However, the way the trabecular look in imaging studies give us clues of possible underlying pathology. Now, let's evaluate this pelvic radiogram. Do you see any trabecular abnormality? If you look closely to the region of the femoral heads and necks, you can probably notice that the left femoral neck trabecula is more prominent than the right. Because the body should be symmetric, we can assume that there is something going on here. But the question is, which side is the one with disease? The left side with more prominent trabecula or perhaps the right side with the absence of trabecula? This particular patient had Paget's disease. Here you have taken although disorganized trabecula. As you know, Paget's disease is a chronic metabolic bone disorder characterized by excessive abnormal bone remodeling. This excessive bone remodeling goes through lytic and blastic phases that end up thickening the cortical bone as well as the trabecula. Here we have another example of Paget's on the left proximal femur with more prominent trabecular thickening as well as the involvement of the right obturator ring and the left iliac bone. If you look closely, you can even notice that the left proximal femur appears larger than the right proximal femur. On the other end of the spectrum, we have a case of thalassemia, where we can see diffuse osteopenia and apparent prominent trabecula, especially at the right proximal femur. But as you can imagine, this is sort of an optical illusion and the trabecula are in reality thinner, even though they look more prominent. In thalassemia, there is ineffective hematopoiesis, which results in extensive red marrow reconversion and expansion of the bone marrow. This results in artificial augmentation of the thin trabecula in the background of an expanded and mostly loosened bone marrow. This pattern is known as cobwebbing. In the CT of this patient with thalassemia, we can see large spaces devoid of bone trabecula, mostly replaced by red marrow reconversion. This absence of trabecula makes the reminder trabecula look more prominent. But in reality is not. Also, keep in mind that similar findings can be seen in patients with osteoporosis and other conditions with poor bone mineralization. For better visualization, we have here a hand radiographs of a normal patient and hand radiographs of a patient with thalassemia where we can clearly see the differences in cortical thickness and medullary expansion. It may appear that the patient with thalassemia has thicken trabecula because we can actually see the trabecula as opposed to the normal patient where the trabecula is not seen. This is because there are too many of them in top of a normal cortex which makes them imperceptible to the eye. So one last case. Here is another young patient with apparent thickened trabecula within the left femoral neck as compared to the right. In fact, what we have here is an intraosseous lesion of the left femoral neck which is displaced in the normal trabecula as we can clearly see at the lateral view. This is a case of an intraosseous lipoma, a focal bone lesion of the femoral neck and not a systemic process such as Paget's disease, chronic anemia, metabolic bone disease, and osteoporosis. Finally, we have side-to-side -side comparisons of patients with true thickened trabecula as in Paget's disease, a normal patient with normal trabecula, and a patient with thin trabecula in the background of poor bone mineralization. Obviously, when you look them side by side, it's quite simple to spot the differences. So, bone trabecular patterns, now you know.